here we are midway through the 2016 U.S. Open, and the Giants remain. But they're surrounded by a diverse cast of mortals. And this study in contrast is a fitting encapsulation of the first week at the year's last slam. Over the last eight days, we've seen experience, but we've also seen promise. We've seen the young and the restless, and sometimes both at the same time. We've had American reps. We've also had a trio of Frenchmen come through. We've seen sequoias and saplings. We've had outdoor tennis, but for the first time ever here, we've also had indoor matches, stadium play under a roof. On the subject of hats, we've had lots of them, but we've also had socks. Some players have won with measured, efficient textbook tennis. Others have expressed themselves more colorfully. Speaking of color, so many players this year have been clad in that bright yellow. They look like racket-swinging highlighters. And they remind us that here comes week two, the time when the tournament's deepest passages get written. That's nice, Sean. If, you had to, if the tournament ended right now, what would the biggest story of the U.S. Open 2016 be? Oh, deux, trois. Right. Three Frenchmen in the quarters, three very different players who arrived three very different ways. Novak and Andy Murray obviously still remain. Serena looks like a good bet. You had one, one story. I said French, one. French, French, French. All about oh, the French. Okay. So, and, for, and for you, Paul? For me, it's about the youth. Just seeing so many young players play at such a high level. And I guess the epitome of it all was the Frenchman that you like so much is uh, Luca Pui. Yeah. the great Rafa Nadal yesterday. Yeah, that was a biggie. All right. You? We, we, we took it. Your I, I, I think, I think uh, yeah, I think that's a big story, Luca Pui. Rafa going down. Having a, having a real Grand Slam drought now. But uh, the tournament marches on, doesn't it?